That's a good celly right there. Yeah, coming off an eight and five season in their third straight bowl win. And I just yeah. got to say, find yourself a coach who can bring the vibes like Michael Oxley. Having a good time here in Indianapolis as Media Day rolls on Ty Felton, Ruben Hippolyte, and Jordan Phillips. The Maryland Terps joining us here on the set. Gentlemen, welcome to Big Ten Media Day. How What's we doing? On? What's going on? How you doing? Thank you for having I, us. I'm doing great. You guys all look sharp. We got Thank the Prada you. purse here. We got the custom suit on the end. <laughs> you guys looking the part, no doubt about it. Appreciate it. Um, how's summer been? It's been good. Been yeah. grinding. Pretty good. Yeah, definitely been grinding. Yeah, it's been a grind. Sure. Yes, been better every yes, day. Yep. It does feel like, and Coach Loxley said a, a lot of great things on the podium earlier that I'll ask you about, but one of the things is he, he said that we feel as comfortable and confident in who we are, that there is a sense that there's a team. He said we haven't arrived yet, but we know who we are. So, Ruben, I'll, I'll start with you. What What is it about this team that feels different and the confidence being able to do what you guys did last year? Yeah, for me, it's all about consistency and discipline. This is the motto. For, this is my personal model for this year. Um, how our habits are going to help us win games. I think that's the most important. Uh, so, you know, we had a player-only meeting at the start of summer. Uh, we brought the whole team in, a team meeting room, and we talked about our habits, and we talked about what we want to accomplish this season. And that's what it's about. It's all about how we handle that, and that's going to determine if we're, you know, if we gain success or not. And that was another thing that Loxley said is that he said this is the most player-led program that he's had since he's arrived in Maryland. It's his sixth season. So, Ty, from your perspective, I mean, the player-only meeting is probably part of that, but how has that evolved and become a, a player-led program, which is always the best way for a program to win? 100%, especially you got to have older guys like us setting the example. you got guys, everybody's putting in extra work after practice. We're having player-led meetings. Everybody's putting in extra work during after, after practice, after lift. So when you have have that type of accountability that's held throughout the whole room. Everybody is looking to be great. So hopefully that helps us have a successful season. And Jordan, I think about you and, and obviously your, your second year back at Maryland, the comfort level that you feel now heading into year number two as opposed to being the new guy last year? Yes, I definitely feel uh, way comfortable right now than I was last time last year around this time. Way more comfortable with the playbook, way more comfortable with things uh, and how they're ran in the program. What is it about this defense? Because I think we talk a lot about the offense, but the defense may be the strength of this team this year. So give us a preview. Well, I think everybody holds themselves accountable before holding others accountable. I feel like we're, we have great leaders on defense with guys like me, Ruben Hippolyte, Dante Trader, uh, Kellen Wyatt, guys like that. You know, we, we all make sure that we're holding each other accountable and we're carrying out the standard that Coach B. Will set for us. Yeah, seven returning starters from a defense that had 34 sacks and 17 picks last season. You came here and said you wanted to be a part of something that you could help build, and, and you have certainly done that. Right. When you think about you deciding to come back for your fifth year and, and what you've been able to do with this program, what's next? We got to go win. Uh, that's the goal. You know, we want to be successful as we can. Um, hopefully get another bowl game under our belt. But, you know, the main goal for me is to get 1% better each game, each practice, and that's the goal for our team as well. Um, we definitely want to put our best product forward on Saturdays for the fans, for our families, for our supporters, and, you know, um, mostly for ourselves. So. You know, there's some new uh, fan bases that are going to be tuning in to you guys and are get to see you out on All the right. West Coast. You got a West Coast game, which we'll talk about coming up in a little bit. But right. what is something about, for people who don't know about Maryland football and are just starting to get to know you guys, what is something about this program that you think they should know? Uh, definitely, we're a fast-paced team. Uh, we're going to be very disciplined. We're going to play fast on both sides of the ball. We're going to run to the ball on defense. We're going to score touchdowns and throw some deep passes, hopefully, on, on the on offensive side. So just know that we're going to be disciplined. We're going to be a fast-paced team. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for our team. I'm, exci I'm excited for this season. We're going to be a team who doesn't give up, relentless. Uh, we're going to play physical on both sides of the ball. Uh, and it's, it's always going to be a show. I tell everybody, if you come to a Terps football game, it's going to be a show. So excited for that. I'm excited also, you know, we're going to get better every game, every day. We're going to hold each other accountable. We're going to execute at a high level and we're going to encourage each other. You know, Ty, I think about the talented receivers that you've played behind and now, you know, you're going to be one of the top wideouts in this league. People are going to know who you are if they didn't already. How has your role evolved and how do you feel about the leadership role that you're taking on now this year? Uh, yeah, coming in, I had guys like Rakim, Jerry, uh, Dante Demon. So watching those guys and how they went about the game on and off the field. So that was the one big thing, watching their blueprint. They kind of turned me into the player I am now. So I'm trying to set examples, set, be a leader for the younger guys and, and we're, we're out there balling. So we're going to keep going with that. Ruben, I probably should have had you host this segment because I yeah. find out that you're, you're a podcast host. You see me, yes. I do see you. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I yes. I, tell me about the podcast because I was searching for it online and honestly couldn't. Uh, there was immediately couldn't find it. So what's mm. the name of your podcast? Yeah. So the name of our podcast is One Speed Entertainment. It's myself, Dante Trader Jr., Bo Braid. We started that last summer. 
Um, we just, w and how we came up with it, we were bored. We wanted to talk about our season. And, uh, you know, we were inspired by some podcasts that are already yeah. out. You know, example, like The Pivot, I Am Athlete. So you just wanted to resemble that, but on a collegiate level. And uh, we just wanted to have fun with it. So that's why we started it up. Um, gained a lot of traction. You know, the fans love it. Everyone loves it. So, you know, we're just continuing to do what we do. I love it. And that's one of the things that I have really started to appreciate is the players who are starting their podcast because you get to see people in a different light, right? right? Like, I can ask you all these questions, but it's a different thing when you're with your teammates and you guys are chopping it up like that. So right. I guess I'll ask you, do you have a different sense of the media now that you've been on the other side? Of I, the definitely, I definitely do. I <laughs> uh, definitely have to watch what I say. Yeah. Uh, can't be as, you know, cutthroat as I would like to be sometimes. Uh. Uh, definitely have to uphold an image. Um, it's definitely a challenging. It's definitely challenging being in the media space because it's a lot of, you know, ins and outs that you got to be aware of. But uh, it's fun at the end of the day. I love it. Yeah, yeah. words matter. They they do. Right. That is for sure. All right, All right. Jordan, uh, Dustin, your terrific SID told me that you watch more film than any player he has ever been around. He definitely does in his <laughs> career. So, sure. uh, talk to me about your film sessions. What are you watching and and your work ethic? He says you know you're the, you're the strongest guy on the team, pound for pound. So I like to watch guys in uh, college football in my position who play defensive tackle. And I also like to watch guys in the NFL. I look at what people do that's good, but I also study what they don't do so well. The reason being so I could try to uh, prevent making those same mistakes in my own game. Um, and I also study a lot of situational football because at the end of the day, like, you know, increasing your football IQ in this game, yes, it's about physicality. You can live all the weights in the world you want, but if you don't have the IQ to go with it, the weights don't mean anything. So it's very important that I study uh, situational football and just know what I'm looking at. The brains and the brawn, a, a winning combination. There's no doubt about right. it. All right, uh, Ty, we can't get out of this segment without me asking you about the quarterback. I know you've been asked about it a lot. Billy Edwards, MJ Morris, who comes in from NC State. What have you seen and, and kind of what, what light can you shed? Yeah, for sure. I've been with Billy for two years now. He transferred in a couple years ago and the MJ just came in. But Talia, he really set the standard and the example for how, how, how quarterbacks should be playing ball on and off the field. So those guys seeing him and, and the other guys seeing him, such as Cam Edge, Champ, uh, Jaden Saray, those guys seeing uh, how Leah played ball, uh, it makes my job easy because they're, they're in the facility all day. They're putting in work. They're with Coach Locks. It's a very competitive room right now because Coach Locks is back in the quarterback room. So it's very competitive, but it, it increases everybody's play because when you see the quarterback working that hard, you want to work that hard as well. So it's definitely a blessing to have those guys. Yeah, when you've had a guy like Leah Tungavaloa who's been with you since you've been there, it is, mm -hmm. it's going to be a change. It's going to be different. But I, I think about the three touchdown game you had <laughs> yeah. uh, against Indiana, which I know that was a special moment for you, but I'm told that your parents, who I know are very surprised, we're not we're right. not in attendance is that yeah they were at my sister's gymnastics uh competition and it was my mom's birthday that day oh okay <laughs> well then i guess she gets to choose right. but did you give her a hard time like did you say hey uh, I said, yeah, a little bit, but I told I told her that I was gonna have a good game that day, so she respected that one. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, happy birthday to you, mom. Three right, touchdowns for you. I love it, and I do think that in wherever you get to where you are, and I look at the three of you sitting on this desk representing this program at the highest level, there were so many people along the way who supported you. So I, I'd ask both of you too, like who who are those people that have had a huge impact on your path to get to where you're sitting right now? Yeah, my mother for sure. Um, I tell everybody we grew up together. Uh, we've been through a lot, so she's my my number one supporter. Uh, my high school coach, Junior Rose Green, uh, he's definitely helped me. Um, when you talk about the transition from high school to college, uh, he's definitely helped me out um, in that aspect. And it's and, and it's countless others. I mean, I have, I have such a great support system, and I'm very thankful and grateful for all of them. So similar to Ruben, um, my mother too, like me and her, I've been through a lot in life. So I've always like saw her fight through adversity, do an amazing job to make sacrifices for me and my brother. You know what I'm saying? Just just so we could have, you know, it's times that she went out, she went without just so we could have. So definitely my mom, uh, my high school head coach, Aaron Shepard, he definitely um, has been a great mentor to me, along with my trainer back in Orlando, Florida, Clyde Williams. Uh, he laid the foundation for me in terms of showing me how to work, um, you know, and how to go about my business the right way. And there's just so many other people that I can name also. I could go on and on all day, but those are just the top three off the top of my head that I can think about right now. I love that. And I think it is so important to, to remind ourselves of all the people who made all those sacrifices to get to where we are. Uh, I want to talk about your schedule real quick, and then we'll do some non-football questions. You guys gotcha. good with that? Let's so do it. early Let's do conference it. opener, you got Michigan State week two. That's on Big Ten Network. And then you host USC October 19th. That's a homecoming game. Mm -hmm. At Oregon on November 9th, the three of you told me that you have not been to the state of Oregon. Right now, I have not. Florida boys no, up here. I have. I heard. Yeah. I heard it's green. Like I it told you. It is green.
green. <laughs> Art is very is, green. The, the, the grass is damn um, green. Or, yeah, <laughs> so it's not excited for that for sure. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the schedule, and again, doing away with divisions is a, is a big, you know, makes a big difference for you guys and, right. and who you don't have to play this year. But Absolutely. what excites you the most? I'll say really just the competition, you know what I'm saying? We're going to take it day by day, of course, but we really just excited for the opportunity to come out here, play, compete. Um, you know, we have some amazing people, amazing young men in our program. We have even like even a more amazing coaches who put together great game plans for us on a weekly basis. So, you know, we're just excited for the opportunity and we're, we're you know, we're, we're going to seize it. You guys are yeah. going to see it. Go ahead. Yeah, for me, I mean, it's about seizing the opportunity. That's all I wanted. That's what. That's how I got here, um, and that's how I continue to have success. It's all about opportunity, um, and you know, taking it and running with it. So I'm, I'm big on opportunity. I, I never want to miss out on opportunities. I always take full advantage of it. So I'm just excited for the opportunity. It's going to be a lot of eyes on us this season. So sure. I'm, I'm ready for all of it. Yeah, so I'm, as, I'm good. as many as they've ever been. There's yeah. no, there's no doubt about it. All right, you guys ready for some rapid fire questions? Let's do it, man. Okay. Um, if you could change or maybe add to one rule in college football, what would it be? Ooh, I would say um, overtime rules. Make them like NFL. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'll I go like with that. that one. Monday's like off is is mine. Monday's off. Monday's off. Yep. Okay, I'll talk to Coach Loxley about that. <laughs> I'll take the targeting rule out. <laughs> Just <laughs> completely take it out. Take it out. Okay. That's, that's All crazy. right. <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. I'll, I'll send that into the rules committee and see what we can do. Uh, favorite NFL player growing up? Julio Jones. Levante David. Aaron Donald. All good answers. Favorite non-football athlete, either current or former, gotcha. somebody that you like? Uh, Kobe Bryant. Mm. LeBron James. I'd definitely say Kobe Bryant. Kobe's a great answer, as is LeBron. Okay. If you could win a gold medal in any Olympic sport, Olymp opening ceremonies are tomorrow, so we got Olympics on the mind. Gotcha. What would it be? 100-meter track. Mm, good answer. <laughs> I'll go track and field. I'm a fast guy. I, yeah. People may not think of it, but I'm a really <laughs> fast guy. A2 speed. I'll, yeah. I'll say swimming. Swimming? I could yeah. see you. Backstroke, maybe? I could see you that. All right. That. Before we let you go, because we got your coach coming up next, your favorite Coach Loxley-ism. What's up, Bubs? <laughs> that's, that's what he always that what he calls. Says? He always calls me Bubs. All right. <laughs> I got the Van Cleef on. I got the drip on. I got, you know, he always got something on. He always got something, some name brand something on. So he I'll does. say that. And he's rocking a great outfit yeah, today. You're right. Don't count the days. Make the days count. He mm -hmm. said that a couple years ago uh, before. I think it was the first day of camp. And um, so, you know, I saw that on the documentary on YouTube, and that just, like, always stuck with me. Like, don't count the days, make the days count. That's a great line. Mm. Gentlemen, terrific having you here. Excited to watch you guys yes, compete man. this year and enjoy it. Enjoy that green grass in uh, Eugene. <laughs> will yes, do. Man. Thank wow. you so much Thank for having you. I appreciate it. And, by the way, Coach Loxley delivered my new favorite saying today when he was on the podium when he said, headbutt the finish. Yes, headbutt the 100%. finish. I love that. No doubt.